Hey everybody, hopefully another short but exciting video today here at Blue Glow Electronics. As you can see we've got a Marantz 2265 um, upside down on the bench. And I've done so many Marantz restorations at this point in time, I'm not going to walk you through the whole thing. But what I wanted to do today was just make a short video here on um, how to restore a Marantz P400 FOMO board. Um, I've made a previous video on how to restore the P700 phono board. So in between having the knowledge on the P400 and the P700 phono board, that covers just about all the Marantz units out there. They, uh, you know, this 400 board is used in quite a few units. The 700 is used in quite a few units. So um, I'll make a short video today on just how to do this. So uh, let's let's take a look at this thing. A couple things to note. Um, if, you, if you've seen the P700 video or if not, um, they're, they're kind of similar, but a little bit different. Um, a couple capacitors on here that need replacing. Certainly these, these uh, electrolytics here and this electrolytic here needs replacing. Um, you've got these two tantalum caps here that need replacing, and we're going to replace those with some electrolytics. These are one microfarad at 25 volts. Um, we've got a teeny little diode right here that we typically like to replace. Those things are notorious. Uh, and then we have the four um, transistors right here. And I don't know if I can get the magnifying glass up here and you can read it. Probably not, but I'll read it to you. These are uh, C1344 transistors right here, which stands for 2SC1344s. Um, all four of these are the same thing. And anytime you see a... Uh, a little transistor. It's interesting here. I was reading a forum one time and it said anytime you see a transistor that's shaped like a shed house, um, replace it. <laughs> and I would agree with them. These uh, these square with little uh, beveled um, notched uh, face transistors like this um, historically have not held up well. They, uh, they get leaky and they uh, get noisy. So we're going to replace all four of these today and the good news is uh, here it is. Um, my bag of uh, um, KSC 1845s um, that, that I've used many, many times over in different phono boards and uh, even on preamp boards sometimes. These are a, uh, a match for, if you notice here, I got it wrote 2SC 1344s. So um, we'll replace all four of these square transistors with these. Um, I'm, you know, these are the... Um, kind of the uh, coupling caps, the poly caps, and I'm, I want to be honest with you, I'm not going to replace them. If they had looked like these, this style, the old um, kind of brown dog bone style, I would have replaced them, but um, these are the um, newer poly caps, and uh, I believe I'm going to leave these alone unless I notice something uh, sound-wise. They, they, these stand up really well. Um, these are Panasonic type. So really um, what we'll end up with is one, two, three, four, five capacitors that we'll replace. Um, one, two, three, four transistors here and one diode. And we'll, we'll show you that as we go along. Okay, one thing to note that's different about the P400 board than the P700 uh, is kind of the mounting. Um, if you'll notice here, especially in this 2265, uh, it's got these studs that mount it and these end up uh, actually you know, being support for the bottom of the amplifier. But um, it's a quarter inch nut driver that I'm using here, just standard uh, Sears issue kind of stuff. And uh, these these things will screw out then. And you have to be careful, they got a little washer on there that you'll have to end up picking up. But you can see, you remove all four of those. Okay, as you can see, I've got that one out. And you may now be able to read out on there that C1344, which uh, is short for 2SC1344. And we're going to replace them here with these KSC 1845s. If you'll notice, I took the leads on these. Um, see how they come out of a pack here um, straight. And I've bent them out just a little bit. And I'll come over here and I'll look at this board and I'll, I'll check the, I'll check the um, kind of the polarity per se here, <laughs> the pinout. Um, emitter, collector, base is what you can see here. See the E, C, B. And then here I've got on this, um, I know that this thing is, if you notice I've written the little pin out here, emitter collector base with the face. So this will go in here like this. And I go ahead and spread these um, wires out so that they fit right in these, these little holes here. So um, once I hold it up then, and then I just kind of flip it on the other side and uh, you do some soldering and uh, get that thing soldered in there. 
I am going to make a video on how to solder here shortly. I was talking to a guy this morning on the phone and he's been trying to do some soldering and he, his words to me were something to the effect of, wow, you make it look so simple on your videos, but when I go to do it, it is much, much more difficult. And then he went on to tell me he's watched a dozen or so videos online and uh, on how to solder. And he said he's really not seen anything that really gets into detail and shows you uh, a lot of tips and tricks or whatnot. So stay tuned, that'll be coming. Okay, I'm moving along on the uh, replacing the four transistors, and I came across these two here. You'll notice um, they between the uh, basin collector on this, they have a um, a small little capacitor here. And so what I did was I took it off first. So that was the first thing. I'm doing this one down here at this point. I've actually removed the capacitor first. Um, then I pulled the the, uh, the transistor out. I'm going to replace it. I'm going to trim the leads off. Then I'm going to glue, um, solder the capacitor back on, much like I did this one up here. As you can see here, I've got the three leads through and I've soldered them really well. Then I'll just you know come along and uh, use a pair of snips and trim those off and then we'll solder this capacitor on between the uh, base and the collector. And then as you can see, I got it soldered back on. I will warn you, use a pair of uh, needle nose pliers to hold that thing when you're soldering it. Those leads and the, the capacitor itself get very hot very quickly. Okay, we've got all four of the transistors replaced at this point in time, and I went and got the capacitors out of the bins. Uh, this is a, uh, this is a, what's in it? It's 100 microfarad, 35 volts, and I'm going to replace it with a Sprague, a nice Sprague. 100 microfarad, 100 volt, and if you notice, they're the exact same size, so. Um, up next, uh, these two here are 47 microfarad at 16 volts. I've got some 47 microfarad, uh, 100 volt Nikki Cons that I'm going to put in here. Um, exact same size. And then these little point, I mean, uh, one microfarads right here, uh, that they, where they use these little tantalums. Uh, these um, should be the same as these, and I don't know why. On some of these boards, they actually used um, uh, larger polycaps, but I'm going to put in uh, two 1 microfarad uh, polycaps. These are 400 volts, but you could get by with much, much less, uh, probably 100 or 250 volts. Um, we're going to drop these in, and uh, you can see that as I go. To note, the original capacitors, here's these little tantalum uh, capacitors, came out. Um, of the first hole, this hole here and this hole here. However, the, they made a, another hole, uh, a third hole right here, which is designed to hold <laughs> something a little larger, which some of these boards will have the larger ones, and some of them will have these teeny little tantalums. And I, why they did this, I don't know. I don't know if it's a money-saving exercise or what, but as you can see, I've got these two soldered in on the outer here. i got to trim the leads, and I'm going to solder the next one here on the outer, light, outer holes. Okay. We've now replaced capacitor, 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 capacitor. And I've got left this one and this little diode is what I've got left. But isn't that a much sexier looking board now with these uh, nice fat poly caps on there? Okay, we've got the uh, new spread capacitor in. If you'll notice, um, I ran this lead pretty short here and just tucked it straight down. But on this end, it's a fairly long run, so I used a little bit of... Uh, Teflon wire cover to get it down there to the uh, to the other spot in the right area. So far, so looking good. We got this one little diode left to go. Okay, and just in case you're wondering, this is H409. So let's go look up H409. All right, here's this little H409, which is a VD1212 diode. Um, and we're going to replace it with two 1N4. 148 transistor diodes in series like we did on the uh, P700 board and I was just looking here on some of the forums and you can see where other people are basically doing the exact same thing so they're using 4 and 4448 and the uh, 4148 will work just equally as well okay as you can see they are all done at this point um, polycaps electrolytics um, the four transistors, the other electrolytic, and the, uh, you can see here, the two in-series ganged diodes that I've got here to replace the one that was in it previously. Um, just a real quick recap, um, in case you couldn't catch what I was saying during the video. 
So for the P400 board H409, which was that little diode, it was originally a VD1212, we're going to replace it with two 1N4448s or two 1N4148s in series. Um, so that's what we did. H401, 2, 3, and 4 are all originally 2SC1344s. They look like the uh, shed house, um, as you can see here. You can see the actual shape of these things here, maybe from the side, but they've got an interesting little uh, wedge wedge look to them. Anyway, it must be replaced, uh, notoriously no, no easy. Um, replace them with Fairchild KSC 1845s. And there may be other digits out here like FTA or FTB but at the end of this. Uh, as long as they're KSC 1845s, you're fine. Um, any of the variants of those will work great. And these things are pretty cheap, about six cent a piece if you order them in any kind of quantity. So for like six bucks, you can get a hundred of them. Um, and then C401, 402s, um, where the uh, one microfarad tantalum capacitors. I replace those with some 100 microfarad. I'd suggest some 100 volt or higher polycaps, which is what I did here. And then I didn't write it down, but the others were on some 47 microfarad capacitors that I replaced right here. Those were pretty much like for like in that uh, 100 microfarad right there, but no real translation needed on those. But I thought I would write this stuff down to help you help you uh, take your own notes and uh, follow suit. Thanks again for watching everybody. Hopefully another short quick video. I may do a quick one on uh, how to do the power supply in this thing as well. Um, we'll see.